Please welcome back to the stage, Becky Strap. Our next guest comes straight from the general session stage, which many of you attended this morning. Dr. Eyal Zimlichman has been the Chief Medical and Innovation Officer of Sheba Medical Center since 2016. In this capacity, he conceptualized and launched a groundbreaking collaborative strategy called ARC, which you can experience a taste of downstairs in the village. ARC aims to accelerate innovations that will redesign healthcare on a global level. His landmark research has won international appraisal and improved the quality and safety of patient care. He joins us today to discuss the benefits of U.S.-Israel medical research and development and how those breakthroughs are being used to save lives around the world. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to Dr. Eyal Zimlichman. Welcome. It's great to see you in a little bit more of an intimate setting after seeing you on the main stage this morning. Um, and congratulations and mazel tov again. Just this morning, Newsweek announced their top 10 best hospitals in the world, and Sheba Medical Center is number nine. Thank you. On the top 10 list. For the second year in a row, they've moved up from number 10 to number 9. Congratulations. What, what a tremendous uh, feat. For many people in the audience, this policy conference may be the first time they're hearing about Sheba Medical Center. Can you tell us what sets Sheba apart from other hospitals? Well, I think uh, to answer that question, I would probably need uh, 10 minutes. But <laughs> really to keep it brief, because we don't have that time, you know, Sheba has always stood out in Israel as the leading hospital. We call it the national uh, hospital, uh, the uh, hospital of the country of Israel, uh, for many, many reasons. We're the largest. Uh, we, uh, we see about 1.6 million patients every year. Think about what percent of the population actually comes through Sheba. So our footprint is huge. But I think what really is unique about Sheba it is the global uh, part that it takes in transforming healthcare, in being there when we're needed, in really not by just being a leader inside Israel, but a leader on the international front. You don't see too many organizations in Israel that are aiming to have a long-lasting impact on the world. And this is what Sheba has set out to do. We call it the Sheba Global Impact. And in that, just that regard, I'll mention two things that we have really are investing a lot of effort in. One you mentioned is innovation, and we've launched the ARC uh, ecosystem, the, the ARC program, which now is a global program with Sheba in the center, and. Our, I'll uh, talk more about it later, but also our humanitarian uh, aid and humanitarian uh, uh, actions. Think about it. How many hospitals in the world are you familiar with that when there is a crisis in another part of the world, we actually go out to that other part of the world to help and give a landing hand? This is really tikkun olam. We haven't seen this with any other hospitals. All the major systems that we all know from the U.S. and other parts of the world, Sheba is maybe the only one that does this as a, as a hospital, not as a country, not as a military force. We've seen the IDF do this many times, but Sheba sees that as its role, and we do this without getting funded. Nobody is paying it for us. Much of it become, comes from, of course, philanthropy. And for example, Roman Abramovich uh, donated the last uh, few uh, tents that we're deploying all around the world. And this is what we call Sheba Global Impact and the Tikkun Olam we feel we're a big part of. Wonderful. <laughs> Speaking of global impact, uh, we can't avoid the fact that the coronavirus is all over the news worldwide. Can you tell us about the efforts that Sheba is making to help the international fight against this virus? So we, we were commissioned, as I mentioned this morning on the stage, we were commissioned by the Ministry of Health in Israel to uh, treat the first coronavirus patients. We actually built a compound just outside of the hospital, not to get any other patients maybe too close. And within that compound, what we've done is really revolutionary, which we've never seen anywhere else. We're using very high-level technology, most of it coming from Israel, some of it coming from the US, again, working closely together to use that technology to monitor our patients, to treat our patients better, to understand and try to predict which patients are going to develop the disease and which patients will have a more severe disease than others and maybe do something about it. 
in that regard, I think now we're teaching the world. We're about to launch a, a webinar to all the U.S. hospitals sharing our experience in this type of uh, operation. And this is something that we've not seen elsewhere. What we also did, and this is just recent, this past Wednesday, around noontime, we announced a hackathon. We call it Hack Corona. And the Hack Corona, we gave 24 hours for startup companies and other industry in Israel who have ideas that might help fight the coronavirus. Wow. Within 24 hours, 25 companies came up with really revolutionary solutions. Out of the 25, we chose the best five, and we're now working closely with them this week. This is right now happening at Chiba to implement their technology in the fight against corona. Some of it is vaccine, some of it is medications. That, that's incredible. That's truly inspiring. Um, Israel is startup nation meeting uh, the hospital, which brings me to my next question. Uh, you mentioned the ARC Innovation Center, and we heard a little bit about it earlier uh, this morning. Can you tell us what the concept is behind the Innovation Center and what your vision is and what you hope it to, to achieve? So this is another example where Sheba is taking a leadership role on a global scale. We um, were frustrated from the fact that innovation typically is about using opportunities. When you have something in your hands, you take advantage of it. But we thought we need to come up with a clear strategy, with a clear vision. And we've set a vision of what healthcare needs to look like 10 years from now. With all of our problems with the current healthcare system, what does healthcare need to look like 10 years from now? And then we said, if we all agree on this vision, let's work to make that vision a reality. And we were looking for partners around the world to join us in that. And I found it, it was incredible when I came to places like Mayo Clinic and Mount Sinai and Mass General, our other members on the top 10 list. And I said, listen, would you want to join this growing group of hospitals and, uh, and, and academic medical centers and uh, industry partners? And typically, the response I got was, where do we sign? How do we become a part of this? And so this is creating a huge impact in the world right now. It's a very recent development just in the last three years. The way it's growing is really amazing. If you haven't heard about ARC, I urge you to go down to the village and, and look and see what it is because ARC is going to revolutionize healthcare very soon within our own lifetimes. Amazing, thank you. You referenced a little bit earlier about, and in, in, in your answer now, you even mentioned the Mayo Clinic and, and some of the other institutions in the United States. Can you tell us a little bit about how the United States and Israel are working together, specifically with Sheba, to revolutionize medicine? So what we do with our partners, we have 15 hospitals around the world that are part of ARC. Most of them, about 10, are in, uh, in North America, the US and Canada. And really, the top-notch systems, I mentioned a few names. What we do with them is we do co-innovation. We come up with what is needed, and then we work together to invent something new that would play a critical role in the future of healthcare. And there are many, many examples. We work closely with Mount Sinai on developing artificial intelligence solutions. We work closely with Mayo Clinic on developing devices that will allow us to provide much better care to heart patients. We're working very closely with Thomas Jefferson in Philadelphia on very new and cu cutting edge telemedicine programs hospital at home programs, allowing to, stay, to keep people in the home without needing them to come to the hospital when they're, when they're sick. This is all cutting edge technologies and cutting edge um, delivery um, methods. And this is where we're now taking the lead, pushing that forward and not just being, being there with you know, writing articles and maybe uh, uh, doing some research. This is something that's applicable that we're going to be seeing in all of our lives very soon. Thank you so much, Dr. Eyal Zimlichman. And I want to encourage everyone to visit the, uh, the village and to see the ARC Innovation exhibit down there. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you very much.